the world's wildest rivers, deepest oceans, and most spectacular lakes, a home to some extraordinary fish. Across the globe, people have developed ingenious ways to catch them for survival and for sport. The power is just unbelievable. Yeah. I think I've got jaws on here. Now, eight British anglers swap their ordinary fishing haunts to compete in the world's wildest waters. The feelings I get at the moment is just pure excitement. We haven't got a clue what we're in for. Through extreme temperatures and dangerous currents, they'll learn new techniques. Oh, my shoulders are burning. And explore unfamiliar waters. This is about as far removed from anything I do at home as going and landing on the moon would be. In a fishing competition that spans the globe. One little fish could change everything. Competing with the elements and with each other as they search for the most incredible fish on the planet. That is why I go fishing. Judged by experts from around the world. And UK fishing legend Matt Hayes, who'll be watching their every move. I've fished everything from the local canal to the biggest oceans in the world. He'll be looking for the ultimate angler. My job is to suss out how much is down to luck and how much is down to skill. This is about finding the best of the best. Have they got that extra spark that I call watercraft? A sixth sense, an ability to be able to think like a fish and come up with tactics to match. Each week, the judges will send one person home. I just know I can do better than this. Oh, I'm going to learn this competition. Whilst the rest continue to the next country and the next leg of their global expedition, only one can win. At the very edge of the Arctic Circle, is Europe's last wilderness, Iceland. From the hot springs surrounding its biggest lake, to the depths of its freezing fjords, these waters will be the first test of endurance for our intrepid aid. If you've fished in the UK, you might think, oh, it's not so bad, we're used to the cold. This is on a whole different level. And when the wind starts to blow and you've got a blizzard going, it's a pretty intimidating place. They will have never fished anywhere like this. This is like the moon. One small step from the end. <laughs> yeah, the end of the world, here we come. <laughs> in Iceland, Matt will be judging alongside Vala Anodetir, a professional fly fisherwoman few people know these waters as well as her. The fishing in Iceland can be very challenging. Our season starts in April and you can see fishermen completely freezing, you know, they can't even tie their tackle and there's snow everywhere. As a fisherman to be in Iceland, it's one of the places that you want to go to to fish and it's, it's killing us really not to know what's out there. This is a pretty alien situation for me. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to be up against. Over the next week, they'll need to adapt skills from home to succeed in unknown waters. Nothing phases me. There's nothing you can throw at me that's about fishing that's going to fight me. For one of these anglers, this first leg of the expedition will be their last. Welcome everyone to the West Fjords of Iceland. This week is all about endurance. You may all think you know about cold weather fishing, but this takes it to a whole new level here. I'm very excited to have you all here, so welcome to my country. As you can see, it's very beautiful, even though it's cold, and I really hope you enjoy your journey. So Matt, will you explain to everyone about this specific challenge? This challenge isn't about catching the biggest fish. It's not even about catching the most fish. It's about catching the most variety of species. 
But of course, that would be too easy. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> so you're going to be doing it from a kayak. Oh. But because there is a loss of luck involved in fishing, we're going to be taking into account location, technique, type of bait used. You've got three hours. Go fish. This is going to be interesting. Exciting times. Give it to me, boys. Good luck, miss. Let's take these two. Okay. Bagsy the red one. Okay. There are two key things for the fishermen to remember. A catch only counts if they touch the fish, and all fish are to be released unharmed. They each have a kayak and an identical kit of fishing essentials. Let's see what we got. I think there's everything here we need. What is that? I'm hoping to catch a fish on this route. What type of fish? I don't know. Whoever's out there. So how many different species are there in this fjord? We've mainly got a um, lot of dab. We've got the pollock. Then we have the cod. That's easy to catch, comparing to the monkfish and the scorpion fish, which are much harder. Some of the fish feed on the bottom. They're rooting around for worms and crabs and mollusks. Some of them will feed around the rocks. Some of the fish will be up in the water layers. So it's no good just sticking to one technique. It would be great if they can actually make some changes and we'll be looking for that. Never ever in my life before have I slept on a kayak. No, is that the clutch and the accelerator? I'm not quite sure. I'm fairly comfortable in a kayak. Normally in the, the kayak with my husband Johnny. Um, so normally he paddles me around like a princess whilst uh, I fish and he paddles. So it could be an interesting day for me today. Jo only discovered her love of angling when she met her childhood sweetheart when they were both 16. When I met Johnny, it became apparent that if I was going to see him at all, I would have to go along fishing with him. But soon enough, his passion for the fishing rubbed off on me. If I haven't got Johnny next to me, it will be difficult. I think that I'm so used to having him there and it's going to challenge me to see what do I actually know. But I would hope that in my head I'll have a little Johnny to try and tell me what to do for the best. Let's do it. Let's go. Bear in mind, you've only got three hours. So keep an eye on that, yeah? Iceland is an island in the far north of the Atlantic Ocean, and the first test for the anglers is in the West Fjords. As the newest country on the planet, the nutrients from the volcanic rocks wash into the rivers, lakes and oceans, making these fjords fertile grounds for all kinds of species, from the flatfish on the bottom to the cods that dominate further up. Do you know what? They're all shooting off over there. Well, should we go that way? We'll go up that way, yeah. That's right. Nice and slick. Relaxing, isn't it? Yeah. Did you watch the boat race the other day? Matt and Valor will be watching the anglers' fishing techniques, as well as keeping tally of everyone's catch. Should we get the lines in the water? Yeah, that's the thing we do now. Right, I've got these tiny little hooks on, with tiny bits of bait. So, fingers crossed, we're going to give that a try. The anglers have been given the basic tackle needed for sea fishing, a rod, and a reel of line. A lead weight of just the right size takes the hook to the desired depth. But crucially, they need something to attract the fish. It could be a man-made lure, like a tiny imitation fish, or a worm or a piece of squid that looks or smells enticing. We've given them quite a choice of stuff to use, and the way they change that will determine what they catch. I hope they will put on maybe squid first. It's very visual for the fish. It's white and it's smelly. Squid would certainly be on one of my hooks and yeah. maybe something like mackerel. So what have you got now? Squid? Right, a bit of squid and a bit of mussel. So this misconception that many people have that you just drop the rod in 
<laughs> and leave it. No, no, there's, there's so much to it. You know, you've got to change the baits around, you've got to make sure everything looks good as well. How long have you been fishing for now? And I don't mean on an Icelandic fjord. Since I can remember, really. My first ever fish was like a dudgeon. You remember um, your first fish? Yeah, I remember my How first big? fish. It was literally only about that big. Ripon grew up in Bedfordshire, and he still fishes on the same stretch of river his father took him to as a child. When I started fishing with Dad, I was probably four or five years old. I was a bit afraid asking Dad for a hook, etc. So I used to nick Mum's uh, sewing needles and like pins and used to make little hooks out of them. When you're fishing, there's a certain smell to the water. There's no other smell like it. It kind of brings me back to when I first was fishing with Dad. Oh, thought I'd just had a bite then. Yeah, fish on! Whoa! Good fish on! Fish on! What's he got? Like a little place or something. Oh, it's come off! Oh, no. For God's sake! When an angler thinks there's something at the end of the line, a flick of the rod at just the right moment should set the hook in the fish's mouth. I hooked it and it just wiggled me off. Really frustrated because it doesn't count, I didn't touch it. This technique is known as striking and can mean the difference between success and failure. I think I had a bite then um, and I struck it too soon. Jeff's had two bites while we've been here and he struck them both too soon. His nerves meant that he reacted far too quickly and of course he's missed his chance now. It looks like many of them are actually striking too soon. They should really know, they shouldn't do that. But Dan and Phil are taking their time. Fish on, Phil. I had a knock. Fish on, John. It's only a small flat fish, but at least it's a fish, and the hook comes out easy, okay, and back he goes. All the anglers are using barbless hooks, which are kinder to the fish. And Phil's flat fish, a dab, is the first catch of the day. I'm going to change my rig now, because I don't want to be catching the same again, and I'm just going to go from there and see what else I can pick up. Fish on! Great. But others aren't far behind. Oi, oi! Fish on! Fish on! I've caught my first fish in Iceland. So I'm very happy about that. Got a cod. That's one species. Very nice little scrap on the way up. There it goes. Right, this can't have a bell. Guy. Oh yeah, tiddler. I think it's a little one of those scorpion fish. It's a weaver type thing with these big fins like this. Jeff has been fishing for over 60 years. And his first catch is one of his earliest memories. I was on holiday with my mum and dad down in Kent and there was an old boy fishing and he gave me a, a worm and he helped me cast out and I caught my first fish on rod and line and it was a little baby trout and it was about so big and all the spots and it was wet and slimy and it's everything that a little kid loves it was a magic thing for me two hours left Dan Phil, Jeff, and Sam all have one species each. Now that's a cod off the list. We want to try some different bait now. The fact that the cod took the prawn, I mean, they're obviously quite tuned into that at the moment. And I've already caught a cod for today, and it's a multi species challenge, so we're just going to try something different. Emma's still hoping to strike it lucky by sticking with her first choice of location and bait. I'm just drifting gently hoping that I might meet a fish. I haven't had any luck so far, but I'm waiting for the really big fish, and that is going to happen any moment. 
<laughs> You're looking very, very relaxed. Do you know, all I need now is a vodka and tonic. <laughs> and that would be absolutely perfect. So what have you got on your hook right now? I've got a great big, massive squid. How far is this from the normal fishing you do in Wiltshire? This is about as far removed from anything I do at home as going and landing on the moon would be. Emma comes from a long line of fishing fanatics. So inevitably, it became her passion too. I was a total tomboy as a child. I have to say I was probably a bit feral. Um, and used to spend most of the time riding around on a pony, bareback or fishing. Getting dressed up was my idea of complete nightmare. And still is now. <laughs> Bobbing along. Well, Emma, she looks like she's enjoying a day out at Margate or something. She's, yeah. she's having fun, but she really is drifting round aimlessly. I think she has more bait on than I had for lunch today. We're not going for sharks, are we? No, no, she's, she's feeding the ocean, that's for sure. <laughs> bait isn't the only option open to the anglers. Phil, shall we try the further out to the yeah. jigging? Jigs, or lures, are artificial fish made from metal, wood or plastic. Attached to the end of the line, lures come in all shapes and sizes. To draw the attention of, and then hook, predatory fish like cod. Just dropping it into the water. What we're going to do is lift the rod and let the lure flutter back down. It's a little bit like playing with a kitten with a ball of wool. What you're trying to do is make the kitten grab it. You're putting it in the fish's face and you're trying to get it to strike. Let's have a jig here. Jig here. Most of the anglers are switching between natural bait and lures. Only James is using both. The original one I had on was that lure there. It's a, it's a weighted lure. I wasn't catching anything, so I used the baited trees, but I've taken the lure off another rig and placed it onto there. So I've got the best of both worlds now. Ahoy there. How are you doing, man? You alright? <laughs> are you listening to all the other kayaks, all your competitors? Yeah, I heard Jeff shouting on before, so obviously he's had one. Yeah, that's why I ch changed my tactics. So I... <laughs> that was definitely it. I thought it was fun. This is the bottom there, sorry mate. Oh, don't, don't worry about me. Sorry man, I'm going to train here. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. You got one? Yeah. Tiny, tiny little yeah, tomboy. fish count. Me, they all count. I'm off the board. Get it. I think that fish partly counts as mine, by the way. There's just an hour left, and three anglers have yet to catch. Rip on. Come on, fishies. Emma. <sighs> and Joe. Can I stop messing about and go catch some fish? I've just changed our tactics slightly. Come into the shallows here and see if we can uh, use some bait to catch a flatfish. My toes, my fingers are a little bit nippy, but at the minute I'm so determined to try and catch a fish, I'm not really noticing. Oh, oh, I think I've got something. You got something? Oh yeah, here we go. I think I've got a fish on the line, but it's not moving how you'd sort of expect a fish to move. <sighs> Emma has either got on a very big fish or she's hooked the bottom and I think she's playing quite a big fish. So there's something out there that has eaten that huge piece of bait. It's taking a long time. Huh? Well, what she's doing, I mean... Well, it doesn't look like she knows. There might be something down there that's rather flat. Do you get halibut in this fish? With time running out, any new strategy could be worth a go. I'm going to try fishing against the rocks of the, the jetty in the hope there will be some small rock species. That's quite a paddle, wasn't it? Oh, right. You can just keep trying. Maybe it's always the next cast. It might be the one. Oh, what do these fish feel like when you catch them? Well, I'm looking to see what's going on with Emma. She's been playing that for a while. Emma's now been struggling with her catch for 45 minutes. I don't know what to do. Going to help her 
will cost Dan his own valuable fishing time. Will you give me a hand? Will you have a go at this yeah, and just see whether you think it's a fish or the yeah. present? Unfortunately, I think you've hooked the biggest volcanic piece of rock that's in this fjord here. <laughs> There's not much time left. I'm going to go for it now. I'm just going to move even closer. Except for your take. Fisher! I've got a flatfish! Yes! I'm so thrilled! In a lot of places around the world where the birds come from, like that, they're there for a reason. But it could be small fish, but the small fish is bigger fish, so last chance saloon. I've had two bites sitting here, which is two bites more than I had out there. This just feels fishy, it feels better. One little fish could change everything. Oh look, look! Hey! I think I've really wiped up that challenge, I'm afraid. Push on! It's a flat fish. It looks like a place. I've changed my position completely in short words. I think that might have won it. One last cast. Yeah, something on there. Another one of those flat fish. Yay! I think it's a little bit bigger than the first one. Time's up, everyone! Rocked up! Get in. The three hours out in the fjord are up. Six anglers return to shore with catches to their names. But Rapon and Emma failed to land anything. Hello, all anyone cold? Freezing. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, everyone. You have survived your very first Icelandic challenge. I think they did overall pretty well. It's cold outside and it's not in everyone's comfort zone to be out on a kayak. Yeah, I thought it was good in parts. A couple of individual pantomimes. Yes, and my you got stuck there for quite some time. Ripon, you didn't catch anything. I lost one. Sometimes you just have a hard day. It's not the last day of fishing. Keep your head high. Rapon and Emma may have scored zero today, but Dan, Phil, Jeff, and Sam all caught one species each. We actually have two fisher folk here who caught two species. James and Joe. But we can only really have one winner. So we've decided to go with the person who caught the most fish, and that is Joe. Congratulations. Your prize, Joe, is that you get the advantage tomorrow. You get to choose your team. I'm really, really pleased how that panned out. As fishing showed us today, you can spend hours fishing and not getting anything, and then it all happens in the last few minutes. Let's put some more wood in here. Have a great day. I seriously thought that last fish I caught had clinched it, but everyone would be good at Since we're in Iceland and we should have some local Icelandic delicacy, my favourite, this is fermented shark. Cheers everyone, you look very excited. Cheers! Oh, right, that's <laughs> yeah, lovely. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, I don't know, that's disgusting. Well, I would like us all to catch more fish. As we say in fishing, tomorrow is another day. Competition is still there to be won, and we'll be trying harder tomorrow. Overnight in the West Fjords, the temperatures dropped below zero, and now the anglers are facing the second sea fishing task of the expedition. The cod is one of the most important fish in Icelandic waters and has been since Viking times. Today, our anglers are going to have a go using traditional cod jigging techniques that have helped shape these communities. It's looking a little bit lumpy up there today, isn't it? Well, this week is all about endurance and true to form, the wind has picked up and the temperature has dropped. And today, you are going in search of one of the most important fish in Iceland, the cod. Get it. And today, you're giving up your sport fishing for commercial fishing. Commercial fishing is one of the largest contribute to our national income. The traditional way of fishing for cod is jigging for it. But this is jigging equipment like you haven't used before. This is all about your endurance, about your stamina. So go out there, 
Do yourself proud and don't let us down. Yesterday's winner, Joe, your prize was to choose your own team. Okay, I feel like um, I should choose a sport team and having to leave the one person behind. But I'm going to choose Dan, I'm going to choose Sam, I'm going to choose James. I'm sorry, everybody else. Right, go fish! Each team will be on a boat crewed by local fishermen. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We'll be helping them prepare the rigs they'll use to catch the cod. We're on two this side and two the other side, don't we? The team with the heaviest haul will win the challenge. An average adult cod can weigh over 20 pounds, so the equipment used to catch them is heavyweight too. A thick nylon line is attached to a winch, not a rod. A heavy lead weight is tied to the end of the line, and above it are coloured rubber lures, designed to imitate sand eels. The weight takes the line down towards the seabed, and then the whole rig is jigged up and down. What I've actually done this style of fishing, you know, with the winches and everything, it's really hard work because the weights are very heavy and when they're cranking them up, it, it really does burn into your muscles. But it looks like they are really transferring their skills from home, like just tying the knots. So I think it's good that even though they're not used to deep sea fishing, it looks like they're really getting the hang of it quick. But that's also what I think is fascinating about fishing. You can always take some little parts or your mental thinking ways. It's only the thickness of the line which we're not used to. We're not used to using any line, anything like this thick. I've ruined that. It's a mess. And you put six or seven turns in it and you take the bottom part of the loop and you pass it through and you put it tight. There you go. I've tied these knots before, it's a good universal knot that can be used in many different situations. Sam has been fishing since he was six years old, and it's now his way of unwinding from the stresses of life. When you've been in work all week in the concrete jungle, doing your thing, earning your pennies, paying your bills, it is a real, I guess you could call it a form of escapism. Some people will do yoga or they do meditation. For me, fishing does exactly the same sort of thing. People say, oh, yeah, it's very zen fishing, and there is a lot to be said for that. You now have a long journey out to those fishing grounds. It's going to be cold, could be pretty bumpy. Once you're there, you've got one hour. Good luck. Here we go. Here we go. Out to sea. Bye, guys. See you later. The seas around Iceland are so productive because of the convergence of two bodies of water. The warm Gulf Stream from the south meets cold arctic waters from the north and this collision of currents brings nutrients pouring up from the depths. These feed the plankton which support the whole marine food chain from the smallest to the biggest creatures in the ocean. Oh yeah, there, there. They've never seen a whale before, so they're having a lot of firsts on this trip. Let's hope that I get a first now in catching an Icelandic cod. Iceland's one of the world's leaders in sustainable fishing. Strict quotas protect fish stocks, and the cod here are huge and plentiful. I'm actually up here in the business end of the boat with Captain Henrik. We're looking at the sea chart. That's our roadmaps taking us to the areas where we know we'll find the biggest shoals of fish. After following the map to the fishing grounds, the captains have a fish finder which uses sonar to pinpoint the shoal. We have a skipper here, and he knows exactly why he's down there. My taxi says to do as I'm told by those that know. And those that know are the boatmen on this craft, because both of them have been fishing this whole area all their lives. And one of them's older than me. OK, team. The captain's actually now got us into a really good position. Come on, you scurvy dogs, get at it. Go fishing. The captains have cut their engines, and the boat should drift above the shoals of cod. Gloves on, new brakes. 
Any fish caught today will be taken back to town and sold. Three. First fish already. Seeing what I found is I found it better working it by hand. Working it by hand. Rather than on the wheel. Or I could go think. Phil's idea of jigging by hand may make it easier to feel if a fish takes the hook. Hey, come on. Come on. Fish. Fish. It's nice that I've got one. Oh, it's come on, rats and double rats. I've had two. I've probably lost another 20. Another one on now. This feels a good fish, actually. Fantastic fishing. Oh, oh my God. God. He's about eight to nine pounds. It's the biggest cod I've ever caught. I'm looking for one bigger now. Phil's been fishing since the age of seven, using a stick as his first rod. But for him, it's not just about the catch. It's just the emotion of getting out there and being amongst other anglers. You might not be the one that catches, but you're amongst a team. 99% of the time, help you out and say, I've caught two on this, try this, because everybody wants everybody to catch fish. Seems to have gone a little bit quiet. That's really, it does that from time to time. As soon as Phil and his team have landed their first few cod, they're on the hunt again. I've got two fish. If all four of us could get two fish every five minutes for an hour, we'd probably flatten the other team very easily. But we don't know how well they're doing yet. Yeah? Uh, this one needs oil. That's happening. Joe's team are still fishing on their first spot. None of us appear to have been catching anything. I've just seen them pull a, a cod onto their boat. So currently we are losing. I don't like losing. Pressure's on. It's quite quiet. I thought there'd be more action, kind of more frenzy and more fish. Maybe it is because there's not a lot of fish going on down under right now. If nothing's going on, they need to change their tactics. And the best way is to move. Halfway through, and Joe's team have stuck it out long enough. Just turn the lines up now, um, so we can move to a different location. But it's quite a long way down there, so we've got quite a bit of a spinning to do. <laughs> on the other boat, being constantly on the move and jigging by hand is proving a winning combination. Get in, get in there, my son. Cracking. Whoa! You little piece yeah. of egg. Yes, baby, that's a good one. I have to keep a tight line, because it will slip the hook. That's amazing. Fill the cards. No, missed again. Look at that beautiful fish. Wonderful markings. I had absolutely no idea how beautiful they were. As the team were doing, I think, well, I don't know how well the other team were doing, but we're, we're certainly filling them up now, aren't we? I've lost my lead at the bottom. It's uh, a little bit of a pain. I'm to re rig. Has a sense of disaster right now. We been to one fishing spot, moved to another, lost a rig, no fish. What happens now? It looks like they're getting a bit anxious, but I had a word with our captain and he saw some fish going on. Go on! Oh! Tough! Tough! It came straight off, it was on, it was off. I just felt it. It jumped and it was definitely, definitely fish. I think it's the time we move to a new location. Yeah, I agree yeah. Skip on your balls, please, as I'd say we're moving. Both boats head off for one final push. I've got a sweat on, it's hard work pumping that up and down. Still probably about 10 minutes left, so I've just got to keep trying right till the very last second. Obviously we've had nothing, all the boxes are empty. And we're seeing those guys with fish, so it's... Uh, it's a little bit of a problem at the moment, the fact that they've got fish and we haven't. Okay. okay. You start doubting yourself as a fisherman when you're not catching anything. All you can do is keep trying. I think with this type of fish, if you catch one, you'll catch one. We've been working as a complete team with all the plans about how we're going to attack this. We believe we're in the lead, but we're not really sure. They could be thinking they're in the lead, so... Oh, yes! Finally! Yeah. It took its time today. The anticipation and the wait was killing me, but uh, here we go, finally. Get in. Yep. Fish. 
started using it by hand as well because you can get a feel for fish takes it. There's another one. Yay. It's got two on. Two! I'm elated with that. I'm really pleased with that. Woo. Come on, king of the cod. I think we must have drifted over a cod area. We all have had some fish on board just now, so instead of no, we might get a few more. I want. You're on? Wait. Last minute. Gone. Gone. My shoulders are burning. I put this lead right out of the bottle, smashed the rest of pieces. Time's up. Lines out of the water, please. Okay, everybody. That's it. Lines out of the water. How many did we get? At the end of the week, individual performances will count when Matt and Vala decide who makes it through. But for now, the winners of today's task will be the team who's brought home the heaviest haul. Vala, we were watching Joe's team. Yeah, I'm pretty happy seeing the team working so well together. Sam, you were pretty good with the knots showing the team. We all went first with the red lure. Maybe it would have been a better strategy putting different colors in the first to see which one works the best. Matt, what about the team that you were on the boat with? Phil, you innovated by working out very quickly that hand lining the equipment rather than relying on the winches was a winning tactic. That was impressive. But the truth is in the fish boxes. Joe's team caught today just under 20 kilos. Which leaves us, Matt, with the other team. Who caught just over 34 kilos. Wow, very good. Very good. Very good. That makes you our winners today. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm starving. Yeah, so are we. You guys floored us. We did our best. I think we put in a sterling performance all round. We all worked those winches good and proper. Bottom boys, they thought that they were the youngsters and they were going to whip us, but not today. Experience showed today. We were all proud of that. Halfway through the Icelandic part of the expedition, and the anglers enjoy a traditional meal in the village. Fantastic. Oh, well, yum, yum, yum. It smells amazing. Do you want some of this one? Oh, then. Oh, I love it. That'll do, bud. Tomorrow, they'll be leaving the coast and the tough world of sea fishing behind. Oh, good, that's good. I'll go straight forward and say that's the best piece of cod I've ever eaten. And you know the fish hasn't travelled far, that's for sure. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Hot there. <laughs> For the second half of their week in Iceland, the anglers are travelling inland, 300 miles south to its biggest freshwater lake, home to one of the country's most magnificent fish, the Icelandic lake trout. The judges have set the anglers their hardest challenge yet, to master the most technically difficult of any kind of angling, fly fishing. I love fly fishing. I feel very, very confident with this because it isn't far off what we do in Great Britain. But the 40 mile an hour winds and driving rain is making visibility terrible. Fishing in this weather is not going to be easy. Theoretically, I should be fairly comfortable in this method of fishing. Um, I do a lot of fly fishing at home, but I've never really fly fished in conditions like this ever. It's a tiny thing I've ever experienced. Yeah, well, this is being sort of one of my first experiences with fly fishing, so... Yeah, <laughs> Most of the anglers have fly fishing experience. Dan and Rapon are novices. I've only been fly fishing for about three months. You know, I, I can cast my fly rod, but in these conditions, it's, it could go anywhere. Fly fishing is not a strong point of mine. I can cast when it's nice weather. This wind is not going to be helping me at all. The elements are certainly against us today, but I can tell you they're in favour of the fish that live in this lake. And this geothermal activity, the volcanic activity, have created the largest brown trout on the planet. 
This is Valor's home turf. She is going to be watching you like a hawk. It's not just about the fish you catch or the fish you don't catch. It's about your technique. It's about how you approach this next part of the expedition. This is your last chance to shine. After this, one of you is going home. Yeah, yeah. Go fish! Yeah, Thanks very much. Let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. Here we go. This lake is over 30 square miles of glacial water, filtered through black volcanic rocks. I'm sticking with you, mate. I'm going to have a few cuts here, but the fish might not be far out, you know. Weather, the wind, not easy fishing at all. I mean, we didn't expect these challenges to be easy, but uh, this one is very extreme. They've got nine hours to catch the biggest trout they can giving the judges plenty of time to watch their technique casting the flies that give this style of fishing its name. What I've got on is a sort of little black thing me jig. It just looks really good fun. Flies like lures attract the fish and come in a huge range of size, shape and colour to mimic anything from a tiny insect to a small fish. What you're trying to do with these flies is imitate something that the fish might feed on. Obviously, they, when they're out in the water, they look like nothing you've ever seen before, but when it's actually moving through the water, it's really not a fish. And obviously, they look a lot different when they're wet. Until you find what they're, they're taking a feed on, you should chop and change. So we'll give this one a go and see what happens. <laughs> The basic equipment for fly fishing is a long thin rod, a reel and a tapered line. The fly is attached to the end, but unlike their sea fishing, no weight is added. The skill in fly fishing comes from whipping the rod backwards and forwards, so the weight of the line itself propels the fly across the water. The object of the exercise really is to get the fly as close to the fish as they can in these conditions. The Where's the fish? Well, do you know? this is where they've got to use a little bit of intuition. I really want to see them moving around. If there's nothing going on, change the fly, take every step. Don't be standing for two hours at the same spot if nothing's going to happen. Choosing where to fish is going to be key to their success today. They're free to pick their fishing spot and then decide if and when to move. I've chosen this spot because I believe this is a geothermal sinkhole here pumping warm water in so this is going to be a warm spot in the lake and then hopefully it's a case of just sitting tight and waiting for the fish to move through if i get the fly choice right then there's every chance of hooking up there's nothing like the thrill of hooking a decent fish on a fly rod it's just you and the fish nothing else on the line to get in the way nothing else to cause drag it's just man against fish with the fly rod i'm going to start here because the way this wind is gusting if you can get the line in the air, the wind will put the line out for you. Fly fishing is just fun, you know. It's one of those things that I like doing. Ah, let's get this loop out. The wind's caught it and wraps it around there and rods it. Start on it. Ugh. This is the biggest night they're going. I would love to catch one of these big old trout, and I expect to. Brown trout are found all over the world, but the ones here are exceptional. They're huge, voracious lake trout, the biggest and feistiest in Iceland. I've seen the pictures. Ah, oh, they're seriously prehistoric looking, incredibly beautiful creatures. And by all accounts, they've done half go some as well. So that'd be another one to tick off the bucket list. Two hours gone and no fish so far. Weather's changing. Although a drop in wind will make casting easier, it could cause the anglers different problems. I'm just going to get up the water because obviously with the, the wind dropping, it will cause too much disturbance for the fish. Trout have extremely sharp eyesight. If you can see them, they can see you. The water's so clear, any disturbance will put the fish off completely. You see another fish out there. Fish on! Fish on! Yeah, I'm just making sure I keep tension on the line. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, hey, the, the hell of a fighter's here, mind. Get it! 
Ben! Yes! Yes! Eventually! Way I, man! Get on! That's probably the most nicest vessel I've ever seen in my life. The probably most important one. <laughs> I can't believe it! It's going back. That was amazing. Probably one of the hardest fighting fish for a size I've ever caught. With James, the only angler off the mark, everyone will want to know how he did it. I changed lures, so it's more of a natural pattern than these big gory lures. Hello, you jammy Jordy. What was the technique, buddy? What was the technique? <laughs> Turn your box over. It was... Yeah. It's one of them. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Anytime, mate. Phil's just spotted what I was using, he's actually changing to one now. So everyone's just changing the setup. After the hard work and the rest reap the benefits. But there's definitely more fish to be caught. Success in fly fishing depends on choosing the fly that looks most like what the fish are eating on any given day. It's a matter of trial and error. Yo! Or taking inspiration from someone more successful. I let the young Jody boy get the first fish, but I knew it wouldn't be long before I had one myself. What a chummy sword he is. Fish on! Looks like Dan's caught one as well. You know, to me it's the best feeling in the world. <sighs> I'm gonna learn this competition. Beautiful little fish. It'd be a great fight for such a tiny little fish, but let's get him back in the water now. Off to fight another day. Congratulations, Dan. How does it feel? Oh, just, I'm really, really over the moon. Obviously, when I went and spoke to James after he caught his fish. But he was hearing information. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fly fisherman, and I won't start to say that I'm a fly fisherman. But I've just been a quarter of fish, so I think that just... You, you know, did! So I'm sooner than other people Yeah, are, yeah, are, so yeah. maybe maybe I am a little yeah. bit of a fly fish, I man, you know? I think you are. Halfway through the challenge to land the biggest trout. And so far, only James, Phil and Dan have caught. A happy fisherman's a fisherman who's got your fish. And there's probably going to be a few unhappy people here today. His pants. Casting the line is the skill in fly fishing that takes practice. If you can't get the fly out to the fish, you won't catch them. If Melbourne's died down, it should be a bit easier, but I'm still not managing to get out as far as I'd like it to get out. Repeatedly flicking the fly rod backwards and forwards between 11 and 1 o'clock lets you pay out line. At exactly the right moment, the line is released to send the fly out to the chosen spot. Start with the rod pointing at the water. Yes. A smooth left, pause, forward. It's literally like tapping a nail mm -hmm. into a piece of wood. Yeah. Oh, this is, but I like a this. A little bit of a pause. No, I can do that when I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> and the trick is not to actually fight the wind because it's behind you, it's to work with it. And in actual Whoa. fact, I think I caught myself. You did. You did. <laughs> actually, you did. <laughs> I got. But it's a whopper. I think what I'm impressed with Ripon's casting, seeing as that he's never used a fly rod before. Ripon, casting's good, mate. Thank you. My fishing is more coarse angling. Just the whole setup is just totally different. But I've been teaching myself off the last three months, just casting out in the garden and out on the road and stuff like that. Jeff first learned to fly fish over 30 years ago. He's making splashes all over the bloody place because my casting style is very messy and very rough. <sighs> oh, look at this. Not good, is it? Well, Jeffrey, I think it's safe for me to take my glasses off. Oh, right, man. Now your line's out the water. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Okay. I'm losing a few flies, though. I'm getting damaged in a few flies. Mm, I saw that. You've got some rocks for mm. You seem to be... Partially down to me and my casting, which has never been brilliant. As neither Jeff nor Rapon have landed a trout so far, looking for a new spot to fish could be the answer. Well, I am tempted to move. I was thinking down there, but looks like Joe and Dan's still there. It's etiquette to kind of, you know, see if there's the space that's clear. I know it's competition, but it's just fishing etiquette. Some people have come a bit close, but it depends on someone's judgment, really. <laughs> Jeff, do you want me to move or something? 
I thought you were walking down the bank. Well, Jeff, I'm just fishing this bit. Um, but in front of you, there's a fish that keeps topping. The thing is, I don't want to go down here and fish down here if I'm going to get in your way. Tell you what, you fish here and yeah. I'll go somewhere else. But, <laughs> Jeff, I, I have a bit of a bit of a thing, though. Mine I don't is on. Be... Oh, no, but come on. Listen, you just, just, just fish it. I'm just going to go and calm down for a minute because I am quite cross. Okay, calm down. Who cares? We had a misunderstanding. I'm going to speak to her later on and try and explain what happened and uh, try and straighten things out with her because I think she's a lovely, lovely person. One of the nicest people I've met, actually. As Emma begins fishing further up the beach, Sam's also changing position after sticking to the same spot all day. I'm going to move on to the beach because they seem to be catching a few on the beach. It's got to be done, isn't it? Can't ignore the signs. But it's not just the fishing spot he's changing. I am going for a bait fish imitation pattern, kind of working on the principle of big fly, big fish. Fish on! This looks like a good fish. Look at that! Oh, I had a bit of a tug then. Yes! You're not easy. I've been waiting all day for this moment. I see little beasties. Wow. Come on, boy. It's powerful. Hang on. Oh, look at that. That is stunning. Oh, God, they're so silvery. A really nice little fish. Yes! In the net! Big stream of fly, big fish. Emma, you have such a big smile on your face. In there, I'm the fish. so, so pleased. Poor fish is being tormented by kisses. Um, but I'm really excited. That is beautiful. That is that is what you come to Iceland for. Bye-bye. Well, but my heart's still pounding. I'm just like a quivering mess. That's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. That is why I go fishing. When they started, they were very, very grouped up. It was almost as if someone had poured lead into their waders. And it was actually when they began to use the space that it worked for them. So I think they're really taking James as he, he was the one who was constantly moving in the beginning. And he got his reward. I mean, he caught the first one. We take Sam, he was rooted to the same spot. He claimed this little peninsula like it was his kingdom and he was going to fish it. It was only when he moved out of that space that he actually caught fish. And Emma, she found a nice little corner and bingo, she gets fish. Joe's experienced at fly fishing, but she's had no luck so far. Uh, no, I haven't seen any fish, I haven't seen any fish rising, I haven't seen any fish swimming, but there are fish in here because the lads have been catching them. I'm beginning to feel a bit disheartened. Hey Joe. Hi Ben, how are you going? How are you? Yeah, it's been a bit of a frustrating day. What's been your strategy so far? Have you been staying in one place? Have you been moving? Well, no, I've been moving about a bit. I've just come over here, so I'm going to give this little spot a go. That wasn't a very good cast either. You're, you're, you're being really critical of yourself. <laughs> yeah, I always am. Just half an hour left to catch the biggest trout. What do you think of the casting generally they're all very different from each other james is one of the best ones casting mm. i've seen jeff hitting the sand back a lot so i don't know if he flies still on i hope do you know who i think is the most improved caster today it's ripper he's the least experienced fly fisher in the group he's the most improved caster today at the moment, my body is just obliterated. You know, I'd love to stay on, but at the rate I'm going, I don't think I will be. It's going to keep fishing. If I worry about the time, then that's just something else to worry about. I don't want to get this frustrated. I think that's just down to the fact that my pressure's on. Oh, it'd be nice to get another one. Oh, I know there's a fish here. It would be absolutely fantastic if somebody caught one at this 11th hour. Big, big, big fish out there. I just saw his head come off the water. There's loads of them. Because they haven't caught yet. The light bit I've got a name is fast approaching, really. 
So much time left. Oh, I'm starting to hit as well. <laughs> We're really fishing now to catch a bigger fish than uh, Sam caught. Because that was a lovely fish that Sam caught. Jason, no, I can do better than this. So I'm a bit frustrated, mate. Myself, really. That's it, anglers. Your time is up. Please bring your lines in. Hi, fish. You know, I'm not disappointed to in the fact that... Well, I am, yeah, I am disappointed there was no fish on, on my rod. I just hope that I've done enough. Total respect to all of you for coping with horrendous conditions at times. It tested you, but some of you came out on top. Well done. I like your casting. Some of you were obviously doing it for a long time before, but for others it was a new thing. I wish you had moved more throughout the lake, but some of you did, but I'm happy. This challenge was about the largest fish. So the winner of this part of the competition with a brown trout weighing five pounds, nine ounces, was Sam. Congratulations, Sam. Thank you very much. Well done. Cheers, guys. Thank you. How do you feel? Uh, over the moon. It was a fantastic fish. Uh, made my day. Well, well done again. As you all know, part of fishing is about luck. The judges were analysing your technique, your style, all of those things. So we are now going to retire to debate who's going home. Enjoy your last few hours of Iceland. You guys have a really tough decision. You've got three very distinct different tests. So are you going to base this purely on statistics? The most fish, the biggest fish, the greatest number of species? No. There's so much more into fishing than just the going plus and plus and plus. You've got different styles of fishing. You've got the fly fishing compared to bait fishing. And fly fishing is much more thought put into it, me technique-wise. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, the third challenge was pretty tough. So I think we do have to use some judgment. I don't think we can just go on numbers. James has been pretty solid throughout the competition. I feel he is uh, confident in himself. And Dan has done incredibly well. I think he's got great fishing instincts. I think he's done well. And then, of course, we've got Sam. In the trout fishing, he stayed in one place for a very, very long period of time. And only when others began to make things happen did he actually follow suit. Then, of course, we've got Emma. She really stuffed her game up. With fly fishing, there's so much technique and thought that you have to put into it. So I think she really just went up. Have you got Phil out there? I think he's steady. Not amazing, but he's had decent results. And then we've got Jeff in the first challenge when he caught that scorpion fish. Which is pretty hard to catch, actually. Yeah. That's not a common fish. It started to come unraveled a bit, though, when he came into the fly fishing. The problems with the casting, losing the points on his flies, wrecking the flies, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't so good. He could improve his technique with the fly casting. His back cast was throwing a lot in the sand in the back area, which is definitely not good, I feel. I think in the case of the first challenge, Joe did show some flashes. We, we both agree on that, but there could be a bit of luck in there. I think that she knows how to fly fish. She just really needs to toughen up. Were you disappointed that Ripon didn't catch anything on that first test? In a nutshell, yes. He was actually improving a lot with the fly fishing. He was getting better and better. He hasn't caught the fish, so he has to be down there. I'd say I don't envy either of you coming up with this decision. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's much harder than I thought it would be, actually. Some nervous faces here. It's been an incredibly tough decision, this. But I can tell you there are three of you who are in danger of going home. Ripon, Joe, and Jeff.
it's been a hair's breadth, I promise you. But the person going home is Jeff. I'm really sorry, Jeff. Oh, Congratulations to the rest of you. Oh, Jeff. This is a brilliant experience, and I can't, I can't knock it. It's great. I really had a good time. All those people back there, we all became very good friends. Major, yeah, I've right. got a couple of days. See you on the next one, OK? Mixed emotions, I tell you. Really happy to go on. I really thought it was me. I really, I really did. I'll tell you one thing. There's one place you want to be is up front street. I'm going to kill the Christmas wait. I can't believe it. It's been probably one of the hardest week sessions I've ever had. Hopefully, the next location's going to be warmer. So we're going to Cuba, are we? Wow. We're going to Cuba. Oh, yeah. Let's get that salsa mojito, boy. How cool is that? Sunshine, shorts and flip-flops, most importantly. Absolutely amazing. Next time, Mother Nature Strikes. It's days like this that make you realise the true love of fishing. The anglers learn to fish the way the locals do. There you go, what have you got there? That? Double hookup. Go in search of the elusive Cuban bonefish. Probably the hardest fighting fish I've ever fought in my life. And the mighty tarpon. It's immensely strong. Hugely acrobatic. <laughs> this is it then. Oh, that was disappointing. A breathtaking glimpse into the world of the Red Arrows. Britain's ultimate pilots as BBC Two goes inside the RAF next tonight. Whilst on BBC Four, a profile of Philip Larkin by the writer and critic A.N. Wilson as poetry season continues with return to Larkinland. And on BBC One, a killer makes it personal 